Hello everyone, in today's guide I'm going to be covering about costumes in Code Closers or CC, however you want to call it. Costumes are known to be the motivation for many players to grind credits, such as myself. For those of you that don't know, costumes are mainly traded through Closers Discord and through players themselves in-game. Black Market is also an option, but best during the current gacha rotation, which I'll explain later. Things such as character UIs, when and where is the best place to buy them, how to craft rare unique sets, gacha, and end game costume pieces. Things like that will be covered in this video and before we begin, I just want to clarify that this is coming from my knowledge and experience, so if there's anything that I may be missing, incorrect, or maybe I forgot to mention, please let me know. Feedback is always appreciated. Timestamps are put in the description. Now let's get on with the guide. New character creation. When creating a character, you complete the tutorial, obviously, but once you complete it, you'll be given missions to talk to the NPCs. You'll be given a costume cube along with other goodies that you'll need later on. When it comes to the costume itself, it's up to you whether you want to use it or not, or later on. I suggest using it later since leveling does take a bit, which means that it will expire sooner before you even reach level cap. Before Lucy released, new created characters in the account would get two boxes which are Draconian and Dark Command. These are no longer given out after completing the quest in the beginning. Instead, characters are given a Zenith Cube, which is another rare set. All of it before then and now were not permanent, so don't worry, you did not miss anything. Costume Walker What if you run out of space in your costume inventory and you have nowhere else to put it, maybe in your personal bank? Go to the last tab and click on the bottom left, and you'll see it. It says Costume Walker. This is used to store costumes you have in your inventory into the costume locker. As you can see, you can create multiple sets of your own and actually save them. You can click on Bring Costume, which is the current costume set that you're actually wearing. It'll bring you to the page you're on. Simply press Save and it will save the set there on the first page. There are actually 10 pages total. You can always add extra pages by buying them through the Bit Store. Remember that you can always check the costume locker at any time, so feel free to change it around as you please. If you equip a different set compared to the one you are currently wearing, you will notice that some costume pieces goes back into the locker, which may end up losing your character portrait effect or the town motion. This is not permanently gone, so do not worry. Just go back into your locker and move the costume pieces that you are wearing back into the costume inventory and simply change the settings back again. Character Portrait and Emotes Character portraits are UIs that you can change for your character at any time. It will be used in the town dungeon loading screen in an arena. Some sets only have 5 pieces, others would need 7 or even 10 like unique or rare sets. Due to the amount of costume pieces required, it also determines the price of each costume. Some costumes don't have portraits but only emotes. Normally the ones with portraits would cost more, but keep in mind that there's even just emote sets that are rare, which would end up costing you more. Of course those summer sets with just emotes are normally the cheapest due to it appearing in past events, many times which ended up not making it much of a rarity at all. 
In order to use these character UIs, you have to put up the full costumes with the accessory in the costume inventory and go to the character customization. You'll notice three tabs in the top called Town. Operational Zone. And Union Arena. As stated earlier, you can use these in different parts of the game. In order to use the emotes, you have to wear the costume itself. Press K, go to emote, scroll down, and you'll see an emote you might not recognize. You can either type that in, or move it into your skill or consumable slot and use it there. If you don't want the costume look itself, you can expand the costume slots of the character. Press P, you'll notice that everyone has only 17 costume slots so they can use for now. If you want to hide the costume you're wearing for the emote by wearing another set over it, you'll actually need to have bits to expand the costume slots in the outer slots. You can use transparent dimensional accessories to hide the accessory you might not like on your character that you may be using for stats. Grinding for a costume now what if you don't know how to grind credits for the set you want? What if it needs to be fast, and what if someone will buy it before you do? As you all are aware, there's always a variety of players in any game you play. Some are generous by waiting for the credits you'll grind for, and some may be impatient or in a rush to get the credits that they want. There is something called reserving. Reserving a set means the seller of the set is willing to hold the costume for you before someone else gets it so you can grind until a certain time frame or simply when you have enough. What I strongly suggest you do is reserve if you know you get the credits fairly quickly, like maybe getting 50 to 150 million credits daily depending on how hard you grind. If you're not aware of how to get credits quickly, I have a guide that can help you out that's in the description and also on the top right of the screen. Feel free to click on it and check it out. But to quickly explain, it's best to craft as many credits buffs as possible, such as talisman, crew buffs, tickets through code fusion, VIP or VVIP, if you don't have it it's fine, buff located in planar gate where all the high TCP players stand. Upgrading costume pieces and tuning Upgrading costume pieces would require you to have phase fiber or greater phase fiber. Most of the time players would become scarce of this kind of material. If you go to the costume in the menu and you go to upgrade, you'll see that you will only need a specific amount of phase fiber to upgrade a costume to 2 star. To upgrade a costume to 2 star, you will always have a 100% success rate. However, for anything that's 2 star, to get 3 star is actually a 75% chance. Honestly, it feels more like a 50% chance rather than a 75% chance. If you want to know where to get fibers, the best place to grind for those are stacking up on something called Lucky Phase Token, which can be used to craft those fibers. There's also dungeons such as Crew Dungeons, Arena David Bosses, Fury Bosses, Contributions, Housing and Gardening, and of course Doppelgangers. Always be sure to complete these dungeons as you will need these for endgame costume sets or conversions and accessories. 
Dismantling costumes that are one star will either give you literally just two phase fiber depending on what costume piece it is. Weapons normally give you five. Normal costumes such as cat ears, tail, bunny ears, and so on will only give you two phase fiber. Sometimes you can get 30 phase fiber by grinding planar gate dungeons if you'll drop something like not the top piece that you can use to dismantle. also dismantle two star pieces which would give you 30 or more greater phase fiber. These are easier to get if we're speaking about dismantling contribution and crew dungeon reward. You can also simply upgrade regular accessories to two star and dismantle them for the fiber you'll need. What if you dismantle three star costume pieces? When dismantling 3 star costumes, you'll get a material called Splendid Phase Fiber. Splendid Phase Fiber are things that you will need to craft things called Performance Fabric Treatment or Performance Fabric Relaxer that you can use while tuning costume pieces. Treatments are simply used to tune As for relaxers, it resets the tuning count when you reach zero. Speaking of tuning, you can craft costume tunings item or you can choose specifically what you want to tune. Having enough material from housing and gardening, you can craft things such as D costume tuning plugs. These are really useful, it's best to stack on them as you have a higher chance to obtain SS tuning, which will be really useful as you gear up. These are earned through contribution, I suggest buying them every weekly reset. code fusion and housing, with enough materials of course, as well as mileage points. But I suggest not doing that, the points take forever to stack up on. There's also a dungeon called the Bell Dungeon that you can get as well. You will need 5 characters, weakest to strongest, that you can do 6 runs of each level. Each character can only run 6 runs as you'll slowly reach up to stage 30. Make sure to receive all the rewards once reset happens. You will not be able to receive the rewards again in a while. Only the coins and the last few materials in the other stages. Gotcha Rotation Costumes are best to be bought during costume gacha rotation. Gacha is gotten only through the bit store in the washing machine. Depending on the gacha rotation, your character would either have both sets, one of them, or none of them at all. That's currently in rotation. If you pull up the gacha, you'll notice that your character can't pull for both or three sets, depending on what's out by then. That's because some gacha is character specific. If you want to pull for a gacha that your current character doesn't have, you'll need to log on to the other character to pull for it. Some sets are female only, male only, or character specific. We 
They use the term rotation because of the fact that the gacha sets come back from time to time every three weeks. Either you get two new sets, three new ones, recolors, two old ones, or one with or without character UIs. So if you're looking for a set, it mostly sticks with the seasons and holidays. You can use that to predict what the next gacha rotation would be for the next three weeks. Make sure to grind the credits if you want to be ready when the next rotation is out. If you think it's a set that you might already have, remember that it's best to be safe than sorry. Unfortunately for new characters such as Lucy, Unha, and Mirai are mostly expensive characters. Sometimes it dies down if players decide to pull a lot for the current rotation, which would decrease their prices along with everybody else. Buy is not new, but always has been an expensive character, probably due to the character's popularity. The cheapest characters are normally Wolfgang, Jay, and Mistletime. Either that or they'll be around the same prices as everybody else. Costume prices outside of Routus female characters and buy are normally 50 mil per piece. In the beginning of gacha rotation that players pull, normally the prices are extremely overpriced due to the hype of the gacha. It would end up being 80 mil or higher if it's around the first week. Do not panic, as it will decrease over time. As stated earlier, it's best to grind the credits before the rotation comes in. There's also gacha that would be around for a long time. I'm not sure if it's permanently going to stay there in the bit store, but it has been around for quite some time now. Things like Lucy, Mariah specific character sets, Lollipop Twist, Wedding, Pirate, Cheer, and more. Most of the gacha in here in this section is either old sets or character specific. Rare and Unique Sets these sets are the most expensive out of everything else. Rare sets are much cheaper than the unique sets. They both do require 10 pieces. Rare and unique sets can actually give you special things such as frame, title, character town motion, Dungeon Motion Voice Changes and Effects Remember the unique prices are not expensive than rare for no reason. It's pricey than rare because of the fact that unique sets are much stronger. The accessories itself can give you 300k total combat power increase, or even more, depending on your costume tunings. Unique sets have 3 costume tuning slots, while Rare only has 2. Unique sets are actually one of the end game things you need to go for. Accessories aren't really necessary due to the fact that there's many strong players out there without those accessories. There's costume pieces that you can use as a set effect that are decent. Now the thing about rare and unique sets are the fact that it's always best to craft a weapon, hair, top, bottom, gloves, and shoes. When you get 6 out of 6, crafting or not, you can get the town motion. That's about it for only 6 out of 6. For crafting them, you get the title and the frame as well as emotion. For crafting 6 out of 6 unique, you'll get the frame, tom motion, and damage font features. To look at these, you need to go to the character customization and you'll see many options you can change. Now, you may be wondering, how exactly do you craft 6 out of 6 rare or unique? To craft them, there are 5 rare sets, 
which are Draconian, Cybernetic, Dark Command, Zenith, and Nightfall. Keep in mind that not all characters have everywhere set. Mariah only has Draconian, Zenith, Nightfall, and Dark Command. Cybernetic set only goes up to Wolfgang. Every other character after him does not have it. Lucy, the new Radis character, only has Zenith and Nightfall at the moment. However, that might change over time with new updates. As for Unique, there are only two Unique sets. Every character in the game has this. Shining Star and Solomon Vestments. To craft these, you need something called Synchro Fiber. These are mainly found through Black Market or through players themselves. If you want to craft rare 6 out of 6, you can use 6 synchro fibers of the specific set you want. Each one is named differently. If you want to search them all at once in the black market, type in synchro. And then click on one of the fibers. Remove the first word and the star to which it just says synchro fiber. After pressing enter, you will see a variety of fibers that are on the market. Crafting rare or unique 6 out of 6 have RNG to where you'd succeed on pieces or not. Let's talk about rare first. Let's say you want to craft 6 out of 6 draconian. You need to buy yourself at least 6 fibers, or more, depending on your RNG. With 2 star costumes pieces for rare set conversion, the percentage would be lower compared to having 2 3 star costume pieces during the conversion. You'll notice here that you'll need to place in your fibers first. Once you place it, you'll need to put in your 2 or 3 star, re I recommend 3, not 2 star, base costume piece. Base meaning it has to be character specific. Fodder is any character. Both of the pieces have to be the same costume piece. Not the exact costume, just the same costume piece. One star costume piece does not work at all with any of these conversions. You'll notice after placing these in, there's a percentage that pops up. The higher the star rank, the higher the success rate. If you succeed, you'll get the rare piece that you converted for, which should be draconian gloves in this example. However, if you fail, you'll notice something called fail pool. The costume pieces you see here on the right are the costume pieces that you can potentially get depending on your RNG since it's random. You can choose whether you want to keep the original piece that you used before or the new item that you got from the fail pool. The costume you use as fodder is completely gone, whether you succeeded or failed. The original costume piece you used after succeeding is also gone, so be sure to use costume pieces that you may not use at all. If you check the black market, sometimes there will be really cheap costume pieces going for 7 million or so that you can use to your advantage for a conversion. As I stated earlier, crafting unique sets 6 out of 6 gives you a damage font that you can change in the customization of the operational zone section. What you need to know about unique sets is the fact that unique 6 out of 6 are actually one of the endgame costumes you really need to go for. Feel free to choose either Shining Star Fibers or Solomon Synchro Fibers. These fibers right now during this recording is normally 20 million or higher. The thing about crafting unique sets is the fact that you have two options. The first option is to use two 3 star costume pieces that will give you a 50% success rate which is honestly still a good decision to do in my opinion. The second option is to use two rare costume pieces at a 75% chance. For both, you have a chance to fail, which is why I strongly suggest to go for the first option. Especially when rare sets are already a hassle to craft. 50% chance already feels like it's a good amount, 
As I used that to get the last few pieces I was missing from my Mirai. There's actually a difference between Shining Star and Solomon. Crafting 6 out of 6 Solomon actually gives you the option to change your character's name tag. Shining Star does not give you that option as it was not thought of at the time. Both do give frames and titles as well. Now, good luck on crafting 6 out of 6 unique. You'll need that more than the rare set 6 out of 6 first when you begin this. Costume Wardrobe This was recently added into the game after Lucy's release. The wardrobe gives you extra stats that you can use in the dungeon. You have to make sure that your costume is not locked. For rare sets, you can choose two rare sets that you currently own and place them into the slots. As long as you have six pieces, it doesn't necessarily have to be specifically weapon, hair, top, bottom, gloves, and shoes. You will get the first row of buffs, which is 10% item drop rate. For unique set, is 20%. You can only use one unique set, not two. So one unique set and two rare sets. The second row of buffs would be the same as for the first row, but with extra stats. Movement speed, HP increase, and mana points increase. Unique increase HP by 1000 and MP by 300. Rare increases by plus 300 HP and plus 100 MP. Both unique and rare sets give 5% movement speed in 10 out of 10. The effects, portrait, and everything else will still be usable. Just this time, you won't actually need it in your inventory. If you wish to use the buffs for unique set, but only have one, then I suggest crafting Shining Star or Solomon, whichever you don't have yet, and put it in the wardrobe so you can use the other unique set to wear instead. Thank you.